and also your master of uh, ceremony for uh, this session. Inshallah, uh, we begin our session with Umul Kitab Al Fatiha. Amin, amin. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, today uh, we meet again for Hadis Sawa program. Uh, before we, we go further, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Shukran Abdul Rahman, uh, Dean of Ahaski IRKHS, uh, to deliver his uh, speech. Please welcome, Prof. Thank you, Brother Iskandar. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wa mursalin. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Rabbi shrahli sadri wa sirli amri Wa hulu uqadatan milisani Yafahu qawli amma ba'd Thank you again Brother Iskandar for presiding this uh, Hadis al-Sabah uh, My beloved brother uh, Professor Ahmad Huzairi uh, Thank you very much for your readiness uh, Willingness, commitment uh, To share your knowledge Your idea, your aspiration uh, with all of us uh, this morning, uh, to all participants, deputy deans in your department, professors, academic members in Ahaski uh, Arkechess, welcome and thank you very much for joining us. Uh, in the recent event for the naming of uh, this kuliah after Professor Emeritus uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman, uh, we have uh, somehow renewed our commitment. The Kulia's commitment to hold tight to the mission of Islamization, to the mission of integration, to the mission of internationalization and then uh, comprehensive excellence. Uh, we are committed to making sure that the founding fathers' aspiration, uh, intention, and ambition could be realized, could be realized okay, in proper way in this current time and space. And inshallah, uh, the knowledge on Islamization that we have learned, that we are going to learn, that we are going to even learn today, will be a key enablers for us, for people after us, uh, to continue doing this Islamization. And to us, Islamization is not only a mission, but also a scholarship. Right, so in this school year now, we do not want to only talk about uh, subject matter or domain of knowledge as a scholarship track, but uh, Islamization could also be uh, positioned as a scholarship track. Right, so we have heard of a teaching track, uh, community engagement track. I think the process of Islamization can also be a scholarship track. So what does this mean? This means that people who are working on Islamizing knowledge or people who are working on helping people like us to understand Islamization agenda, okay, uh, could uh, write their work, publish their work, and be recognized as a scholar in Islamization agenda, like Professor Akmal this morning. So I hope whatever she's going to be uh, presenting to us today, okay, will be recognized, will be celebrated, uh, will be published, and then we can position it as a scholarship, scholarship of Islamization in that sense. So this is in, in addition to scholarship of teaching and learning, which is championed by Dr. Lehana, okay? scholarship of community engagement, which is championed by many of you, right? scholarship of subject matter that all of us are doing, and another one is scholarship of Islamization, in addition to maybe in, uh, scholarship of integration as well. So congratulations uh, to Professor Akmal uh, for taking uh, this uh, challenge uh, to enlighten us on, on the strategies uh, to do Islamization in a proper, in the correct and meaningful way, inshallah. Right, so we, inshallah, will benefit a lot from your uh, sharing, Professor Akmal. Thank you very much and over back to you, uh, Brother Iskandar. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Sukran, for the meaningful speech. Uh, distinguished audience, brothers and sisters. Uh, the topic for today's session is uh, the groups of Islamization, concept and practices, which will be delivered by our esteemed uh, speaker, 
Professor Dr. Akmal Khuzairi Abdul Rahman, Director of Center for Islamization, Centris, who is also our professor at the Department of Arabic Language and Literature. A little bit about uh, Professor Akmal. He obtained his uh, PhD in Arabic Language Studies from uh, International Islamic University Malaysia, this university, Master of Arts in Linguistics and Translation from University of Leeds, uh, and Bachelor in Arabic uh, Literature from Yamuk uh, University, Jordan. And of course, he has also written many research projects. Uh, without further delay, the ceremony gracefully invites Professor Dr. Akmal to proceed uh, with the session. Please welcome Dr. Prof. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala barakatuh. Uh, Alhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi man tabi'ah wa ala. Thank you, Brother Is. Uh, Professor Dr. Shukran, our Dean, um, Deputy Deans, and so also Heads of Departments, uh, friends and colleagues, <coughs> And also younger generation faces, uh, perhaps this is the first time that uh, we met. Um, uh, it feels like we are indeed uh, growing older with the Kulia. Uh, most of us have already served like 25 years or so at the university. I myself uh, mark my 26 years at the university. Some of uh, our new staff, uh, among them were uh, our students. So uh, that's how quick that you know time flies uh, and alhamdulillah again uh, it's good to be back uh, among uh, uh, your family members uh, our colleagues and friends at the kulia uh, so given the time uh, uh, 45 minutes or so um, that was given to me to uh, uh, to unpack some of the most salient points about islamization uh, but you notice that the title is quite uh, extensive um, uh, it talks about the scopes, uh, functions. Um, but Prof. Shukran just now mentioned about a very important point about Islamization itself. If um, we want to move forward, and one thing that we need to bear in mind is that um, we need to know where we are at the moment. Uh, that is very important. You cannot go anywhere unless that you have already a certain, uh, you have a certain where you are, I mean, where is our bearing? So that's exactly one of the objectives that I wanna share with uh, my esteemed colleagues this morning uh, through this small discussion and sharing moment, number one. Number two, perhaps that we can take a glimpse of what Islamization is um, on the ground. Um, this, I'm gonna share with you some of the results of our Islamization index that we have uh, done for this year. 2021, <clears throat> and perhaps that would give you some sort of a uh, an impression about Islamization and what needs to be done. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so let's begin. I'm going to share with you my slides. Uh, am I allowed to do so? Yes. Okay. Right. So uh, sorry. So this is the slide first. Uh, Scopes of Islamization concept and practice. Um, okay. Uh, one of the most important things that we need to bear in mind and um, always remember is that uh, when uh, we did one survey, 50% uh, or so of the respondents, they mentioned that they didn't know that such uh, a policy on Islamization exists in the university. I mean, this is very sad. Uh, the same result of survey in 2013 uh, by uh, Prof. Uh, Rosnani, was it Rosnani from education? And uh, Brother Sakarma okay, indicated the same result, meaning to say that after 10 years, I mean, we are still getting these complaints, um, these uh, views from our lecturers saying that, you know, hey, we are not in the know uh, about Islamization and we don't know such a policy even exists. But this policy and um, it is actually uh, the fruits of the efforts of uh, the previous director of centuries, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Hazizan, our former dean as well, uh, that they managed to come up in 2014 or 2013, right? A policies on Islamization. And it covers what we are going to talk this morning. So I'm, I'm just going to focus on some uh, points in this 
policies of systemization, just to share with you some of the things that we need to work on in order for us to move forward. Before I share with you where we are at the moment in terms of the Islamization uh, agenda, uh, first of all, we need to know the scope. And uh, when we talk about Islamization, what is it all about? So this is very important to define Islamization itself. Okay, exactly, I mean, for our uh, younger colleagues about this Islamization. So it came from one big question, okay? So uh, this was like 20 years ago when they, uh, they uh, our um, forefathers, they met and discussed about this very important question. And the question is, what is so Islamic about International Islamic University? Is it because that you can see you have a mosque in the middle over there that we have like, you know, most of our students are Muslims and they are wearing hijab, you know, uh, and covering their aura, what have you. Uh, or that we have uh, like a few subjects on Islam, uh, the uh, worldview uh, under our fit department. Is that the case? Why is it that it is an Islamic university? So they've been discussing about this one. Okay, Now, uh, because of that, right, uh, an Islamic university, and you know that the raison d'etat of uh, uh, of, of uh, the establishment of the university in 1982 is because of the, uh, the uh, resolutions of the Islamic uh, International Conference on Education in 1978, saying that we should have a model, an Islamic university model. And that is why the university was established. I mean, that is very clear. But then again, to move forward, what do you need to move to put there in the contents of that university? So that is actually a big question that we're discussing about, right? So uh, because of that, we have the Islamization as one. It was enshrined there in our constitution. It was mentioned there very clearly. So that is why that we have this policy, although that it's uh, it came quite late, by the way, uh, 2014, and we were established in 1983. But then again, it is there. So one thing, you know, our take home message is that, that you need to share with our colleagues is that, so there is such a policy uh, and the policy defining Islamization and also the scope of Islamization, okay? So, um, oh, why is it that? I cannot, cannot get out from this one. Okay, sorry. Okay, I have to share another screen. <clears throat> so this is it, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to share with you this uh, uh, the, the the book on the policy. Okay, I've summarized this one for us to share and actually digest. You don't need to, to, to read the whole policy statements. Okay, so uh, number one, it is the soul of IUM, as I mentioned to you just now about the definition of an Islamic university. So it must come. I mean, it, it is because that Islam itself is in the soul of the university. Uh, the reason why it was established and the reason that you know. Uh, it, it is there to, to achieve the mission of uh, that Islamization. It is the soul. Number two, it's a foundation of uh, IUM strategic pillars. Now, before, um, before this current leadership, um, we have our strategic planning whereby we um, uh, categorize our missions uh, as an university uh, based on certain strategies, governance, uh, teaching and learning, what have you. And these are called pillars, okay? Now, Islamization used to be one of those pillars, but then again, it was revised and made the foundation. So it was a pillar and then it becomes the foundation, okay? It was a pillar and then it becomes the foundation. So not only that, it is a soul, the spirit of IUM, but it is also the foundation of which each of the strategic pillars need to refer to. I mean, for an example, if you're talking about governance and government must refer to Islamization, what would be the best practice in Islam? And teaching and learning, for an example, we have the Islamization of knowledge. We have uh, how to actually uh, nurture. We are talking about Murabi and what have you. So it is a foundation of IUM strategic pillars. And in the current SAF, for an example, right? So it is still the same. So it is there and the mission, right? But it was enriched in such a way, it was enriched in such a way that I would see that this stuff that we are focusing on at the moment is the interpretation of the Islamization, the practical interpretation of Islamization. So before, of course, we have the foundation, right? 
But then again, how about the action? What is actually the action? Now came the new rector. Well, he's no, no, not new anymore. Okay. And, and he put forward this uh, gagasan pemikiran, you know, about this, um, this, this discourse about uh, Sejahtera academic framework. And it is exactly the translation of Islamization. There is no contradiction. Okay. People were saying that why now, before we're talking about Islamization, and then now you're talking about self. No, you should be looking at that one okay, from a uh, thorough point of view, that before Islamization is what we mentioned as the soul. It was the foundation. So when it is a foundation, you came up with a newer agenda to interpret that foundation and the soul. So there is no contradiction. So I want to make that one very, very clear. Okay, Number three, uh, now uh, when we talk about the scopes of Islamization, so it cuts across everything that we are doing at university. We are talking about TNL, teaching and learning. We are talking about research and uh, publication. We are talking about uh, international collaborations and what have you, right? So these are the things that need to be there. So when we mentioned it was the soul, it was their soul, it was the foundation. So uh, naturally, so when we talk about uh, uh, the promotion of Islamization, it must cut across everything. So that is when, when you talk about Islamization, not something that has got to do only about uh, Islamization of knowledge or human knowledge. Right. So it cuts cuts across everything else. How do you deliver the subject, the way that you approach it? Uh, and of course, it varies across the disciplines. We are not talking about the same level of Islamization between, let's say, um, uh, human sciences and revealed knowledge. We are not talking about the same level of Islamization, uh, let's say, uh, between marine biology and medicine, for example. So some courses, okay, you just deliver the material, but again, in terms of getting it there, you know, you want to put the message across to the students and you must have that kind of delivery, the teaching and learning that would incorporate the concept of Islamization. That is to make sure that the students really understand and appreciate their role as Khalifa, for example. They know that they have creators. When they learn about all these marvelous things in the sea, for an example, in marine biology, we got this question from one of the lecturers. They're saying that, hey, how can I do that Islamization of knowledge? I mean, I'm teaching, I'm teaching uh, fishes you know, and animals in the sea. So this is exactly the thing that we want to address, that we are not only talking about Islamization of knowledge, right, in terms of transforming the knowledge, okay, the, uh, the uh, um, epistemology, okay? it doesn't necessarily have to be on that level. But you can teach something, for an example, about the marvelous creations of God, although that you are teaching marine biology. And what more that if you are teaching medicine, for an example, there are lots of things the biological things, you know, the anatomy of our bodies that can be related to the greatness of God. So that is actually Islamization. It doesn't necessarily be restricted to only transforming the knowledge in terms of the epistemology. So this one must be understood well. So that is why we are talking about Islamization that cuts across teaching and learning, research and publication, and everything else, all the business that we are doing at the university. Now, number four is, uh, I, we mentioned this now, right? So it is uh, not only about teaching and learning, our core business, of course, but those uh, businesses that support our core, core business. Governance must be uh, excellent, right? Campus administration must be excellent. Otherwise, these will not be supporting. And now um, we are working with uh, Prof. Faris to ensure that we, 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 we get the, uh, the, the, the correct setting. It is called the BIA. I call it ecosystem, right? So we must have it like that. So we cannot just talk about teaching and learning in the, from the perspective of Islamization, but we must be talking about Islamization from every perspective. Otherwise, this will not take off. That will be the problem. We'll be talking about things, but then again, when it comes to implementation, we, we sort of have many hindrances. Uh, many, uh, many uh, grouses, many excuses, and what have you, because one, people do not understand. And second, because the system is not accommodative enough. It doesn't take in such initiative. So it must be there. The facilities must be there. The ecosystem must be there. So this is what we are talking about, you know, uh, about the cutting across all affairs and levels of IUM. Whether you are an MSD, whether you are in Kuliah, whether you are the Mahalla, for example, whether you are the sports center, for an example. So this must be synergized. Okay, come together and try to be on the same platform, on the same page. So this is a policy as well. Okay? It cuts across. Number five, okay, this is new. 
right? Uh, doesn't feel new because some of the scholars that were to, who were talking about Islamization, they were not focusing on this one. Although they were talking about someone who want to Islamize, he or she, himself or herself, need to understand Islam well. So, you know, this is one of the reasons that why before that we have the diploma in Islamic studies, you know, for those who are teaching in human sciences and those who are teaching revealed knowledge, they are very much encouraged to take up courses in human sciences. So this is exactly to, 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 to mold that kind of thinking uh, that you must understand, right? That you must be prepared yourself as a murabbi to nurture and educate others. Otherwise, how come that you yourself do not understand and you want to make others understand? So that would be impossible, right? So this is what we talk about, the Islamization of the self. We are not talking about Islamization of the subjects, the topics, knowledge um, anymore, but it, uh, it encroaches into some other areas as well, especially the self. So this is, was, was put forward by uh, Prof. Kamal Hassan. The Islamization of the self, it is about the development of the self, right? So this is where that focus is. And uh, the prof uh, rector was talking about humanizing education. This is exactly it. This is exactly the thing, right? So uh, we was, he was talking from the same platform, actually. So there's no change in that. We are talking about how to develop a person. We are talking how to develop the self. We are not only manufacturing, manufacturing students for the market and industries. Yes, that is important. But then again, what kind of human that you're producing, if those people that you put in the market do not have the moral and ethics? So that's the question. At the end of the day, things will not work out, right? So that is important for us. So this is another aspect of Islamization, that when we teach, for an example, we are not only teaching the subject, we are transforming our students, that, that we must remember. And for me personally, you know, as um, when I came to the university, like, you know, 20 years back, this was absent from my mind because we lecturers, for an example, young lecturers, we have the tendency to, to, prove yourself, uh, to prove yourself more in front of the students than to actually to mold them. You don't have that idea as yet, but it'll come to you as you grew. Okay? Afterwards, like you, know, you have been teaching like 15 to 20 years and you have uh, for yourself, your grown up children, and then you would understand that you are there not only to teach and transfer knowledge, but also to really, really look into your students and try to transform them, right? So, so this is something that we must understand, especially for our young, younger colleagues, right? You must understand the fact that, yes, of course, in the initial years of your profession, of course, you are trying to improve yourself, right? Whether you are knowledgeable in your subject, whether you're conducting or teaching effectively or not, whether you're speaking correctly or not. So these are the things that will keep on coming to your mind, right? So, but then, right, do not forget the fact that we as lecturers, we are also there to educate and nurture. So this is it because we are developing the self, right? So sometimes, yes, we, we know it is important for us, okay, to, 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 uh, to stress on the achievement of our students but do not forget this one that we are not there only for the achievement we are there also for the fulfillment okay these two things are different okay we have the achievement and we have the fulfillment what we are there for not only for the first part the achievement yes i mean you must make your students uh, successful otherwise they will not graduate right they will uh, fail in their subjects yes right but at the same time you are there to help them discover themselves you know, discover themselves. I mean, how can they fulfill their life expectation? What exactly is the objective? So if we know this, for an example, you would direct, you know, and harness whatever means that you can get in order for you to shape the mentality of our students, that they are there, not only that they want to learn from you, okay, and they want to learn new knowledge from you, right? That is correct. That is okay. But at the same time, they want to see that if can you can you can guide them to a higher level, you know, uh, I mean, to become a better person. So this is the thing that we need to bear in mind when you talk about becoming a lecturer. It is not about you, uh, that you are responsible with the knowledge, with your specialization. Yes, that is very much understood. Okay. But at the same time, at the same time, we must also understand the fact that we are there also for a reason. So this is very important. So this is about the Islamization of the self. 
Okay, the development of the self. This is the scope that we are talking. Not that we are talking about Islamization of knowledge. Some people say that, you know, it's just restricted to that realm. No, uh, because it, it also covers almost all, as we mentioned. It is the soul. It is the foundation, right? So it is the reference, okay? It is the reason. And, and scopes also covers all, especially the self. You cannot make something Islamicized unless that you yourself understand Islamization. What is actually the, ob the, the objective? You know, what is actually the direction, where we are going, where we are at the moment? So these are the things that we need to bear in mind. Uh, you see, uh, the, these are the terms perhaps that we can uh, discuss and also uh, um, look into you know, on some other occasion. Uh, jihad, nafs, tazkiyat, nafs, you know, these are the things, things which is spiritual. And Prof. Shukran, myself, and Prof. Aziz Baruth, we are now with a committee, a university committee, and looking into the spirituality thing. Okay? How can we enhance spirituality? What are the things that we have been uh, doing all this while in order for us to, 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 to strengthen the spiritual sides of ourselves? Okay? So these are the things, right? So we have been doing that. It is not that we haven't picked up anything. Okay? So we have been doing lots of things, by the way. And policy number six, you know, and of course, when you come to the term Islamization of knowledge, you know, we are talking about having an alternative paradigm in developing knowledge. We must have this critical view, the perspective on the things that we are doing. And this is not coming like, you know, um, I mean, myself, for an example, many of our colleagues, when we have been teaching the same subject years after years, years after years, right? But then again, it never struck us before. I mean, we heard about Islamization, right? But then again, it comes to you at your latest stage in life that you realize that, you know, you need to tweak a little bit, tune in a little bit what you have been teaching. And this is something which is not developed overnight, by the way. I'm talking this to uh, my colleagues, myself, and also my uh, younger colleagues at the Kulia. I mean, we must have this one. Because the critical thinking must begin earlier. I mean, if you begin earlier, for an example, you have lots and lots of things to tackle, you know, because uh, if you begin earlier, inshallah, you'll gain traction over time. But then again, if you begin later, for an example, and then, you know, things might be a little bit different. Okay. So try to begin earlier, for an example, try to be critical about it. As I mentioned to you, some subjects, I mean, it is just there, right? You just cannot do anything about it because we are talking about knowledge. That is why even the uh, debate on Islamization is that, uh, is it Islamization of knowledge or is it about Islamization of human knowledge? And some knowledge, it is just there. It is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is no need for us to Islamicize like you know, uh, natural sciences, what is there. So you need to move to the, the other aspect. You're not talking about the, the, the knowledge itself. You are talking about delivery. How can you tweak the thing that you have been teaching into something that would entice the student to transform themselves? You know, how can you drive them to be ethically motivated, for an example? You know? So these are the things that you need to take advantage of the subjects that you are teaching. Uh, so as I mentioned to you that this is important for us to be critical. Otherwise, you might be teaching the same course for 20 years and nothing has changed. And this comes back to the question of, you know, if you, for an example, teach, I mean, I, I, I teach linguistics, but in Arabic, by the way, right? So, so what has changed, right? You use the same thing, the Western book translated into Arabic, for example, for years and after years, but what is actually the addition that you have already made? So I came to realize this, like, you know, eight, seven years ago, after teaching about 15 years. So things like this, I just want to let our colleagues and our younger colleagues know that if you can just push yourself a little bit into thinking what kind of addition that you can make and contribute earlier, right? And then you would have that, you would have, you'll be on that direction, okay? For you to transform something and create, perhaps put forward an alternative paradigm in constructing, uh, in developing knowledge. So this is uh, statement number six. And of course, um, this is the uh, disclaimer that the word Islamization, Okay, it's not only about um, imposing or converting people. So that is why Prof. Kamal of Fleet, he would uh, prefer the term Islamization, not Islamization. So it is a long debate and discussion about that one. 
And not to forget our other component that is revealed knowledge. When we talk about revealed knowledge in terms of Islamization, we're not talking about Islamization per se, but we're talking about integration. So there must be like, you know, change. How can we actually look at all this traditional knowledge and make them more relevant to our modern context? And how is it possible for us to uh, tap on the, this traditional knowledge in order for us to move forward? So this is what the Prof. Kamal called the Tajdeed, the Ihya, and also the Ijtihad, exercise of independent legal reasoning. So this is it, right? If I want to talk about guidelines, I don't think that I have the time. But then again, please refer to this uh, policies of IUM on Islamization. I'm just going to move to... Uh, okay. Now, I want to share with you what we did back in 2017. That was the time when our brother, Dr. Alizi, was, uh, was there and uh, Prof. Uh, Rashid Morton was there. And he's still with us, by the way, uh, Prof. Rashid Morton. And this one, we entrusted him to carry out a, uh, like a general survey. We want to know where exactly we are. Okay? Before, when we talk about Islamization, we are talking about Islamization. Always the, 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 the thought about Islamization, we are afraid, for example, that it has become a cliche. You know, people talk about Islamization all the time, but then again, what they do is only talking. We don't want that to happen. We want to know if you want to talk about Islamization, you have to know where is your current position, where we are at the moment. Are we implementing it? If that we are implementing it, are we implementing it correctly or progressively? Is there any traction that is happening or not? Or are we still at the... Uh, the same stage as before. So this is exactly what we want to know in 2017. I know <laughs> it's quite, you know, a few years back, but it is very, very important. Now, if you notice that, you know, up there, uh, we're talking about least, medium. So this in the guidelines of IUN policy, it talks about the stages of Islamization, the stages of Islamization. So there is like, you know, the least necessity, the medium, where we are at the moment. Are we already in the advanced stage of Islamization? So this is the question that we want to know, right? So this one, we took it from the Islamic, uh, sorry, from the IUM Islamization policy, right? And we divided it into four categories. And our objective in uh, making the survey is to know exactly where we are. Are we already in the, in the advanced level? Or are we only talking about, you know, we are still there, you know? You know, we are not moving anywhere. Where we are at the moment is very important to know our bearing, to know our position. So that is actually the reason why we did the, the survey. Yeah, you can read the, uh, the details about this one. So uh, the, the least important one, for example, just explaining. And, you know, uh, the medium one is about adapting, right? And uh, the third one is about comparing, correcting, amending, weeding out and what have you, okay? Now, what we did was that we, uh, oh, how do you say this in English? We skim through, eh? we scan, right? Uh, more than 282 theses. It was a big project, by the way. It's like, you know, 100,000 the university gave us. But then again, unfortunately, we only managed to run it in three faculties, IRKHS, uh, ICOL, and also uh, economics. So these three big uh, faculties, with that 100,000, you can just imagine how many RAs that we, uh, we uh, um, were assisting us. You know, we're talking about 40, 58,000 pages. We are talking about 5,000 5, pages of 26 books at that time. Uh, and we're talking about uh, 2,000 pages of 438 course outlines. So we have to, and we have the criteria, of course, right? And uh, we did not do it with IRK, by the way. So they are excluded because uh, the, uh, uh, the disciplines are already Islamic and also we want to save the costs, all right? So that's the study analyzes only six departments uh, for Islamization. These departments are psychology, okay? Um, our dean uh, is from psychology department, communication, political science, history and civilization, sociology, and also English language and literature. So what we find is this, right? So you can see that, you know, where we are at the moment. If I want to compare it, this percentage with the uh, categories up there, 
uh, medium and where we are. So where we are at the moment. So if you're talking about no more than 50%, then we are still in the middle. We are still, we are still here. The second one, eh? we are still here. 26%, 50%, we are still, but we haven't been here as yet. We are not that advanced in terms of doing our uh, Islamization. Okay. So if that can be, you know, um, accepted as a statement, right? So you can see that psychology, 26%, 33%. Highest is psychology, okay? Uh, psychology. And this one, okay. How can I? Okay, sorry. And uh, this one is the thesis, right? Uh, the thesis that we compare it, if, if you want to take a, a longer look at this one, okay, just for you to understand and grasp the idea. So what does this show us? This show us that we, are, um, we haven't been, or we have not um, been able to progress to the higher level of Islamization. In terms, in terms, that now we are not talking about the teaching and learning. We haven't talked about teaching and learning. We haven't talked about the nurturing. Okay? We are talking about the practice from the research and publication, from the course outlines that we have. Okay? But of course, that the survey, we didn't use the method of observing, right? We used the, 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 the method of text analysis, and we tried to compare what we have in the course outline and also the thesis and some books that we had, right? So this is the result. If it is solely based on the publication, if it is solely based on the books and also the thesis and course outline, so this would be the result. I'm not saying that, you know, we are covering things like teaching and learning uh, instructions inside the classroom. So this is not what we did. Okay, so, but, but in terms of what was being published, the thesis, so this is the result. Okay, we can see that from the uh, evidence that we have, right? So we haven't been able to move forward for a more advanced level in Islamization. So that is actually something that we concluded from the survey. But if, let's say, that you compare it across these three, um, between, sorry, between these three faculties, Kulia, RKHS, and, you know, <laughs> I mean, surprisingly that you can see that I call. I call uh, tops us, right? In terms of the percentage of carrying out the Islamization agenda. So it's like 34%, a little bit ahead of us, right? Uh, and uh, we are more or less equal with uh, uh, K and, M and M MS, right? With economic. So this is actually the thing that we concluded when you look at the thesis. I mean, the thesis that we are producing still, if you look at the uh, two faculties still, I mean, we haven't reached that, that level, the higher level of uh, Islamization as uh, what we mentioned in the guidelines, right? So, so this is a very, very strong message that we need to really focus on, that we need to put on more efforts for us to alleviate ourselves, okay, to a uh, higher uh, level of uh, Islamization at the Kulia. Otherwise, we'll be stuck there. And we are talking about university, even if this survey was done in 2017, right? So it's like, you know, 20 plus years or nearly like 30 years uh, after our establishment. And yet we haven't got ourselves there at the level. So this is something that perhaps we need to focus on. And how can we do that okay? in terms of the publication, in terms of uh, the, uh, the, the, the um, uh, course outlines? Okay? Uh, how can that be done in order to support and to progress not to always be at the same level years after years. And uh, so this is the book, right? It is a details of what we mentioned just now. Uh, IRK uh, 36 and ICOL is not that many, okay? And uh, this is one thing that I wanna share with you about uh, the feeling of Islamization. We have been talking about Islamization all these years. You know, we have been talking about it and people are talking about it, but what is actually Islamization on the ground? Is it happening? Is it understood well? So these are the things that we do. We have the Islamization index um, that we uh, manage to, uh, um, to construct some of the questions and uh, the tools uh, to know um, the perception. Okay? This is a perception study, a perception about Islamization. Okay? from the staff, from the academics. 
But unfortunately, um, the number of respondents that we get is not that many. We are talking about 2,000 um, staff of IUM, and we blasted uh, these uh, questionnaires. But then again, you know, um, uh, people, I don't know, because perhaps that they don't see it as important. So only like, you know, 70 plus to 80 uh, lecturers and academics, they responded. So these are what we get from that one. Uh, we are doing this every year, by the way. And this is, again, a message, uh, if I can just share it with you, that if you get, you know, uh, the, the email from us uh, to seeking your assistance to fill in the survey form, I mean, please have the courtesy and time to help us out, right? Uh, in order for us to really, really understand, I mean, this is one way that you can contribute towards the uh, agenda of uh, Islamization. Um, <clears throat> so this is it, right? Um, so we the concept of Islamization uh, in IUM, okay? Uh, you can see that, um, well, this is good. Islamization accepting the fact, you know, some of them understand. Islamization accepting the fact that some aspect human required, this is good, okay? Um, this Islamization is an alternative to the existing conventional education that is based on Western and secular model, okay? And you have this one uh, strongly disagree, okay? strongly disagree All right wow okay so we have still a group of our own lecturers who do not believe in islamization as an alternative paradigm okay um and uh, you have questions like you know a continuous process I cannot see the rest of this one. You know, how can I just get rid of this? Oh God, right. okay. Okay, sorry, I have to make it smaller just for me just to read the uh, the, the boxes at the end over there. Uh, continuous process, yes, strongly agree. Um, but you see number five here, Islamization is not an overemphasized mission. Okay. It's not an uh, overemphasized mission, but still you have people who say that, you know, we are overemphasizing on the agenda of Islamization. Uh, so we have like five here and four. Islamization is a success in IUM. You have like, you know, three saying that, you know, totally disagree. Uh, you have like uh, 30 people saying that and you know, just do not know whether it's a successful or a failure. Okay. Actualizing is a long process. Uh, this is... Uh, Okay, uh, and on akhlaq, for an example, just to give you the feeling, right? So we are doing this just to give you a feeling. We're talking about Islamization, but then again, you want to know what is actually the uh, the ambience there on the ground? What is actually happening? Are people still understand and practicing it? Do you see it, you know, uh, being uh, practiced around you? So this is why the questions are there. How often you observe your academy faculty make of students research material? So this is why we're talking about akhlaq. You know, and 28, you know, 28 says that sometimes, I mean, still they are there. I mean, uh, academics. So this is a survey is given by the academics. They uh, say that among the colleagues, they're still here. You know, uh, sometimes, sometimes mean there is, uh, it is happening that make use of student research. All right. Uh, how often do you observe the academics in your faculty use course language on students and other stuff? I mean, we have like sometimes 17. Of course, most of them, they don't, they don't even, you know, they, they, they get to hear that one. But it's quite uh, alarming to see that seven over there, often, you know, uh, some of our colleagues, I mean, perhaps Allahu Alam, they are hearing from the same person, Allahu Alam. I just, I'm very much hopeful that they are listening to just one or two person, those people, right? It doesn't show that how many of them are actually, uh, you know, uh, conducting their behavior in such a manner with students. And how often do you observe uh, academics and faculty reveal examination question? Never, 57, I mean, this is very much okay. How much do you observe academics and your faculty takes bribe? Okay, never, okay? You have this one, number four and number five, it's not there, but still it is a little bit concerning to see that there are two people who responded, yes. I mean, they took bribe, Allahu Alam, right? So, but this is, uh, uh, it is not that alarming. You can see that 69, the majority of them, they say that, you know, just it's not happening. How often do you observe academics and faculty backbiting? This is a little bit alarming. Yeah, you can see that sometimes it's high, 28 people. 
we see that people, Allahu alam, I mean, this is something that we need to tackle. You're talking about backbiting, manga staff, what have you. How often you observe academics in your faculty lying still? I mean, uh, you know, never, like, you know, 17. Observe academics for postponing classes. This one is, uh, we need to tackle this one. Like 25 said, they, you know, they normally would hear that the lecturers, they're postponing their lectures, right? Without any reason. How often you observe academic faculty classes before the stipulated time that reasonable course, like quite a number there as well. How often do you observe the academics and faculty involved in plagiarism? So this is very important, but not that many. Yeah, most of them would say that never, but still, so you have like none over there. How often do you observe the academics and faculty not available for students consultation? This is a concern right? for us. At the uh, This is not uh, about a specific faculty, by the way. So this is actually something which is general. Like I mentioned to you that we just want to give you the general impression about Islamization. How is it happening on the ground over there? So this is this not we're not, not talking about the kuliah, right? So just uh, this is what is happening. So uh, these are the things, right? Uh, favoritism, um, uh, faculty being rude and disrespectful for students in 13. That's quite an alarming number, by the way. Uh, 13 that we have sometimes, 29 never, okay? Uh, and uh, how often do you observe academics and faculty violating standard practice in the assessment of student work? I mean, uh, still we have a number over there that, that we need to improve on this one, although that the number is not that many, but then again, still, because it is still there. Certain cases, for an example, even if we have it like one case, that it is bad enough for us, right? So this is what we don't want to happen. Uh, academics, faculty trying to submit exemption results within failing, Again, uh, so these are the things and what is happening, whether that our, our lecturers, our academics, they're abiding by all the rules and regulations or not. So uh, this is about it, scope of Islamization, right? Uh, so this is where we want to see the scope of uh, state Islamization policies. Uh, most of them say that, you know, they, uh, they, they uh, 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 strongly agree. But then again, there are a few people who say that, you know, perhaps that they don't know whether the book, whether the policies existed or not. So this is something which is, again, you know, we are talking about, so they keep on giving these reasons and we notice a few of them having this mentality. Scope of Islamization, implementation of state and policies are clear and understandable. You know, uh, number three, do not know, 20. I mean, quite an alarming number, by the way. I mean, Islamization is not a rocket science. Come on, people, All right? It is not something which is that difficult. I mean, you can become uh, professors in your respective field, but you just cannot understand Islamization? Really? I mean, what, what are you talking about here, right? Islamization is not a rocket science. I mean, it's up to you, actually. It's not something that, you know, that difficult at all. So you must understand this one. Sometimes people are saying, you know, they're showing their, their true color, their attitude, who they are at the moment, just by, by looking at these answers. And uh, the specific body is done, okay? uh, of course, under centres and the office of this uh, activity has been formally recognised. Yes, the establishment of the Centre for Islamization. And uh, of course, that it has a um, uh, leading school of thought is the long-term goal of IOHK. So this is it. I mean, mean to say that still we are grappling with the issue of people saying that they do not understand what Islamization is all about. But I would mention to you now that I would say that it is purely an attitude problem. I would say that. Not because the Islamization is a very complex notion that you just cannot understand. Not because that we lack the resources and material. It is all there. You go to the website of Center for Islamization, there are videos, there are books, there are lecturers. There are lots of things just to give you the understanding about what Islamization is all about. But then again, it's all up to us, right? You can always keep on saying that, you know, I don't, don't understand. Okay, I just don't care. I'm indifferent towards that. Okay, but this is, I would say to you, an attitude of which if, let's say, that we can just change those people around us who are still having such an attitude, it will be a great contribution for us to move forward. So, like I mentioned to you, I mentioned to you, I want to leave you with three things. Number one, about, you know, uh, the uh, information that all the things that we, I'm supposed to talk about this morning is all there in the IUM policy. You just type IUM Islamization policy and you can have the book downloaded for free. One. Number two, about the position that we are at the moment, it's very important for us okay, to, uh, to, to, to really understand the fact that we are not that, you know, we, we haven't moved to the level that we are supposed to move in terms of doing our Islamization. Okay? And number three, on the ground, if you talk about Islamization, there are still things 
that we need to be concerned of, right? The attitude of the staff, what have you. So these are the three things. I hope that I've already managed to uh, um, to uh, deliver it this morning during this time given to me. Thank you uh, for uh, our Kulia for having me to share with you the salient points of which we do need to continuously understand right? and appreciate. Right? So these are just small, small points, brothers and sisters. It's not that complicated at all. But we need to know where we are at the moment. And we need to know that we need some sort of an attitude change. That is important. right? And we need also, when we talk about the students, we need to become a murabi, a nurturer, someone who can provide them not only with knowledge, Someone can provide them with not only uh, achievement, but also fulfillment in life. So that is something which is continuous. And we are doing a lot, lot uh, on the ground to ensure the implementation of this agenda uh, to be continuous, inshallah, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I rest my case. Thank you again for inviting and having me. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Thank you. I stopped sharing, sorry. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Akmal, for the very informative and uh, beneficial inputs. Uh, it is good to have someone like you to um, expose and explain to us about IOM uh, guidelines, perhaps not all. And you have uh, connected uh, the explanation uh, with the analysis. Uh, so we are now going to have five minutes question and answer session. Uh, the viewers on Zoom and YouTube could type your um, concerns in the in the chat box or live chat, respectively, or unmute yourself uh, to raise your concerns. In the meantime, um, I think um, rather. Azon will be sharing um, attendance link with all of us. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah, Prof Akmal. Prof Akmal can you hear me? Okay, Prof Akmal, um, thank you so much for your inputs. Um, uh, it's uh, um, how do I say it? It's it's very good to see those figures. Um, of course, uh, we are aware of centuries, but. Uh, personally, I think Sentry is quite exclusive um, uh, in its approach. Yeah? Um, perhaps, uh, what is your opinion if you can be, uh, Sentries can be more inclusive? Uh, perhaps you do town hall and share your findings with people. Um, because uh, I just knew about the policy quite recently, uh, about a few months ago. And I thought that uh, every members of the uh, of the university should have an access and understand and read and have a look lah, at the policies. So, um, what perhaps your plan that centuries to be more inclusive? It's uh, an ongoing uh, process, Dr. Aslina. Um, we have our coordinators at the Kulia. And we do have meeting, frequent meetings with them, whereby not only that we are updating them, but they are also updating us on the activities that are taking place in the Kulia, of course. Um, that is one uh, method how we, um, uh, we try to uh, eliminate this exclusiveness right, through uh, our coordinators. And second, of course, we have been uh, uh, robust in promoting materials in our website, uh, you can see that of late, uh, we promote our, uh, our uh, programs online, uh, tackling some modern issues and what have you. Um, but we cannot help, you know, uh, in terms of um, uh, the extent that this information will spread. So that is the thing, okay? uh, especially that, you know, sometimes the university, uh, uh, it is counterproductive in some of the directions. Of course, that I'm talking about this and I'm trying to amend this thing. For an example, ITD, uh, they put an embargo for any announcement from, uh, except from certain centers. And sometimes it just cannot reach out because of that. So that is one of the problems that we need to remedy, of course. Uh, but other than that, uh, please do understand that, uh, well, you know, that people when say the Center for Islamization, they imagine that we would have, you know, the whole army behind us, but not actually it. We are only three people, by the way. You know? <laughs> 
23 people and most of us are lecturers, researchers, and also supervisors. So that's actually the problem, okay? Uh, unless that we're talking about the, uh, but, but we are struggling, we are struggling and we have our hands full by the way uh, but thank you for bringing this one up it is very important for me to uh, to look from that perspective and to improve on jazakillah khair jazak thank you thank you for akmal any other concerns or questions to be raised from our audience? Yeah, can I ask? Please, Prof. Yeah, Prof. Akman, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi Thank you very much for your lecture. Uh, so about Islamization, as you know, we start Islamization in 1990 uh, under Prof. Uh, Dr. Abhamda Wusleiman. But now, uh, I think it's better for us to consider two languages for Islamization of knowledge to put in Arabic and English in the same time. As you know, official language in IUM is English and Arabic. Sometimes terms in English, the majority of uh, speakers or who knows Arabic more than English, I think they don't understand the terms in Islamization. At least if can do something in simple way to give the, the essential uh, elements of Islamization, put it in Arabic. I remember in 1992, when Prof. Prof. Shaban Ismail, he was working with the, the Dr. Abdelhamdul Sulaiman, and he joined student, elite student, and at the same time with some lecturers who want to contribute to Islamization of knowledge. Uh, and uh, we have a committee how to develop Islamization through uh, human sciences, and at the same time, how to uh, deliver these themes of Islamization in a simple way. If we understand these themes of Islamization, I think they can affect it on the student by time. I mean, if lecturer know this in both languages, I think this will be affected more and more. Sometimes, you know, Islamization, as you said, they think that only to put Islamic concept, only this is what they think about. But you know, Islamization, we have three uh, dimensions related to the, to the universe, related to knowledge, related to reveal. Uh, this is what we, sometimes the people don't understand. I hope this will be at least in the future uh, to translate English to Arabic. This is important until we can affect this in Arab world that they understand that this university has uh, their own, I mean, uh, concept of Islamization that can affect it on their understanding. Because by, by my experience, when I sharing with the many international conferences, when I speak about Islamization, something is strange for, for those, Arab, especially Arab countries. How you put Islamization in human sciences? And something is said, because majority, as you know, their culture is from British and from USA. Majority, those who teach some uh, human sciences in Arab countries, their culture, they're uh, studying in USA and the UK and European uh, countries. But the idea of Islamization is something new for them. Thank you very much. Point, point taken, inshallah, Prof. Asim. Uh, based on your suggestion, uh, centuries, inshallah, we plan to hold um, a series of talks, perhaps in Arabic, mm -hmm. and we will identify those who are competent to deliver the content, inshallah, to our lecturers. So just, just give us some time just to find the, the right person and also uh, to gather some of the uh, participants, inshallah, from those uh, from the Arabic background. Jazakumullah for your suggestion. Brother Iskandar, can I? Please, Prof. Okay, Prof. Akhma, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for Salam. your insightful talk and points. I think you mentioned about uh, the level of awareness. You mentioned about the level of acceptance. You also shared with us the status of operationalization. How do we operate uh, or how do we operationalize uh, Islamization? 
Uh, I think the third one is important, uh, especially uh, to to all of us, like you said just now, we can uh, classify our academics into a number of groups. Uh, perhaps the young ones are better than the, the old one in terms of operationalization. But uh, if we uh, could focus on the operationalization, how do we operationalize Islamization? At which level? Is it at the subject matter? Is it at the approach? Is it at the value? I mean, how are we going to blend the three, three notions or three focus? Um, Perhaps uh, we can think of uh, collaborating as well, Takma, Sentries and KRKHS, uh, being yes. aware that uh, uh, KRKHS or now AHAS KRKHS is the center for uh, Islamization and integration. Perhaps uh, we could strategize some way forward uh, to collaborate uh, in uh, concretizing uh, this agenda. What say you, Baris? Yeah, of course. So we, we, we ourselves have been grappling with the issue, actually. I mean, where to begin, where we are, you know. Uh, not only that we have been facing with uh, many conceptual questions, but also operationalization as well, of course. I mean, you know what is happening on the ground because why? We don't have this symmetry between the disciplines. That is actually the problem. You know, some disciplines I mentioned to you, they are way much forward mm. in terms of Islamization. Some they're still struggling. Some they're just you know, still, still understanding. And not to mention that we also have other dimension of Islamization, like you know, delivery, teaching and learning, research. Mm. That we haven't just you know touched yet. We 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 are barely touching on that one. Mm. You see? So uh, again, I mean, these are the things because. It is the problem with, no, I don't see the problem. The issue with Islamization, it is an approach more than it is a methodology. So that's the thing. Okay. So you just cannot just say that if it is a methodology, then you can just have it applied in any discipline as easy as that. But because it's just a general approach, I mean, you just do it. Okay. As long as it is aligned with the objective of de secularization, de westernization, and emphasis on Tawheed. How that you do it, I mean, that is still left for discussion. But uh, we are, inshallah, uh, zooming in on that, uh, Prof. Shukran. Uh, as I mentioned to you that we are gathering, it's, we are actually dependent on not, I mean, we are administrators. I mean, I must be frank with you that I am the administrator. I'm not the one that, who is in charge of Islamization rather than just, you know, observing the Islamization policies. But we are getting much, much assistance and help from our professors. And we will keep on relying on that one because we do have like, you know, a quarterly meeting and uh, we discuss about all these issues and how to actually move forward. And one of the things, inshallah, we look into this one. And if we can set a date, for an example, just to discuss, you know, about all these things and how to move forward. And we try to compare between the disciplines, how to actually progress and gain traction, inshallah, in implementing Islamization. Jazakumullah. Maybe one last question, Dr. Akmal. I am very much enthused by your statement just now that IRK subject uh, is not subjected to Islamization. Do <laughs> you agree on that? That because uh, Islamization, of course, the, the process of uh, desecularization, and when you talk about uh, revealed knowledge, I mean, it, it is more about integration. It is about more integration. And then again, we just want to focus on Islamization more that because we don't have the, you know, enough funding <laughs> to do the research. But we wish that inshallah we'll do that because this one is also very important. You want to say that whether or not, for example, our uh, Islamic studies is up to date. Are they contextual, for an example? So these are, again, very, very important points, to, uh, questions to ask of which we haven't even ventured into that as yet. You know, we, we, have the, we would have the time, inshallah, we'll look into it. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Mal and the viewers who have raised uh, their concerns. May Allah bless all of us for uh, this initiative. Do we have one more question? Okay, no, all right. But now we have come to the end uh, of the session. Uh, we truly appreciate uh, your participation uh, in this um, uh, session. And please forgive us for any shortcomings uh, throughout uh, the session. Uh, with that, we end the session with Tasbih Farah and Surah Al As. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Thank you, Prof. Akmal. Thank you very much, Prof. Akmar. Thank you all. Thank you, friends. Thank you very See much. See you, inshallah. Yeah. See you, inshallah.
Inshallah. Thank you very much. Yalla, Stasi. <laughs>